This was none other than the kingdom of Spud, a kingdom that mostly was covered in mud. There had once been a king. He'd been handsome and chic, but in Spud, being chic made you seem like a freak. His name was King Walter, but it didn't work out. Ever since he was young, he had wrestled with doubt. After all, the Spudlian manner of dress was perhaps best described as willful excess. For instance, their wigs were all ropey and rough, like violent volcanic eruptions of fluff. In Spiff, every hairpiece was natty and neat, while in Spud, they seemed to be scraped off the street. So too with their clothes, they could never be missed, for a Spudlian outfit would often consist of polka dot trousers, a checkered chemise with tiger print patches on the elbows and knees. That was Spudlian clothing, so garish, so loud, but they liked it that way. In fact, they were proud. Although some might call it grotesque or absurd, it was simply what Spudlian people preferred. To them, it was stylish. It was simply the trend. We'll call it eccentric, so as not to offend. To King Walter, however, this fashion was bad. With his people in paisley and bright yellow plaid, he began to suspect that he didn't belong, that being a spud, well, it simply felt wrong. He could feel this was true in his bones, in his blood. So he went to consult with the shaman of Spud. Ah, yes, the shaman, that preacher of peace, with his billowy bell-bottom breeches of fleece, with his glasses as thick as the base of a jar, and the lens of each eye in the shape of a star. With his bristling goatee, with his flowery robes, with the jingle of earrings on both of his lobes, with his dreadlocks that hung like the strings on a mop, and his fluffy red turban with a daisy on top. The shaman of Spud was a mystic, a seer. He lived in a hut to the palace's rear, subsisting on nothing but yogurt and rice, which is why you went there when you needed advice. Ah, uh, shaman, said the king, stepping into the hut. I've got this bad feeling deep down in my gut. He explained how he felt with a pitiful pout. I just don't fit in. I'm the oddest man out. The problem is simple. I can't stand my clothes. They certainly aren't the ones I would have chose. I want something regal, something worthy of praise. Have you seen what they're wearing in spiff nowadays? Fashion with elegance, glamour, and glitz. Fashion that matches and actually fits. That's nothing like us. Our clothes are a sham. This kingdom would fail any fashion exam. I'm serious, shaman. This kingdom would flunk. Surely you've noticed. We dress like we're drunk. All the while, as King Walter continued to gripe, the shaman just sat there and puffed on his pipe. Then, when King Walter's complaints were complete, the shaman of Spud floated up to his feet. Dude, said the shaman. Oh, you gotta relax. You're the king of the spuds, and those are the facts. Do you know what it means to be spudly, my man? It means you dress up just as wild as you can. Look at me here. Check out these threads. I look good. From my shoes to my velvety dreads. These clothes are not clothes. These clothes are an art. We spuds wear them wild. It's what sets us apart. Our spudly and duds are the grooviest rags. We got checkers and polka dots, ziggles and zags. To be spudly, my man, it means crazy with zest. Dude, it's how spudly and people look best. Having finished his speech, full of bluster and hype, the shaman sunk back to the floor with his pipe. To King Walter, however, the shaman's advice wasn't very much help. It would never suffice to make him feel better or any less tense. To him, the whole speech hadn't made any sense. Uh, thanks, said the king, backing out of the hut. In his mind, he was thinking, that shaman's a nut.